Are your flip cups more like flop cups? <laughs> Are your wrecked rings just, well, wrecked? <sighs> well, we have the solution for you. And that's the Fluid Art Experience. Here in Dallas, Texas, on November the 12th and November the 13th, you have the opportunity to be live and in person with one of your five favorite YouTube artists. Come learn some tips techniques and everything you need to know to replicate some beautiful art, you'll be taking away art with you and you also have the opportunity to come and join us at a Texan barbecue and a question and answer session. So why don't you go and log on right now at www.fluidartexperience.com and see what all the fun is about. We'll hopefully see you soon. Well hello everybody. Hello there. And welcome to another episode of Massey Art, Art Studios. Studios. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Lee. Yes. In today's episode that we are both very excited about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'm going to be doing a straight pour. Excellent. Yes. A wandering straight pour? A wandering straight pour. Ah. Yes. This one's going to be wandering all over the canvas. I love it. Okay. That's really interesting. I know that we just did the wandering straight pours in the in the yes. piece that we collaborated on. I was on. very inspired by that. I loved it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I might have a challenge for you though at the table. I'm okay. going to do a swipe that I'm going to channel, hopefully, my East Coast girlfriend, Kathleen from Cos Creations. Who we all love. Love and adore and absolutely yes. cannot get enough of. Um, and who cooked us biscuits and gravy when she came to stay and I still, oh my God. still crave those biscuits so and good. gravy. So, so hopefully good. we'll be uh, getting those again in November when she comes to visit. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to channel Kathleen on this swipe with some green inspired, oh. well, they're not green inspired because they are green, some green colours. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. I have some really amazing colors, I think, in my mind of right. what I want to use. So okay. I can't wait to like see what happens with these yeah, colors. Yeah, normally we use the same colors, two different techniques, but this time we're just going rogue and doing whatever yes. we want. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I leave. I'm excited. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It means the world to us. And also, in November, November... 12th and 13th. Absolutely, visit. yeah. Um, at the Plano Convention Center, we are having our fluid art experience, Fine. the pl the Dallas experience. Yeah. Um, where Mina, Kathleen uh, from Cause Creations, Karen from Waterfall Acrylics, mm -hmm. Sarah Mack. Yeah. We're all going to be here teaching classes on on different techniques. Right. So, hope to see you there. But there's still spaces available. There are. Yes. Get them while they're hot. Right? Exactly. Uh -huh. So, well, anyway, let's get to painting. I'm, I'm really it. excited about this. I can tell. <laughs> He's stumbled over his words to get into the studio. So let's do it. Let's let him get in there. We'll see you at the table. All right, guys. Well, hello, ladles and jelly spoons. <laughs> it is Lee at the table. And as you've already heard, today I'm going to be channeling our East Coast girlfriend who's currently enjoying herself over at Disney World, um, Kathleen from Cos Creations Art. I had the opportunity to spend some time in her presence when she came here for the Dallas Sip and Pour weekend yeah. that we mm -hmm. hosted. And everything that you see and probably feel about Kathleen on the channels is absolutely the truth. She is beautiful, she's free-spirited, she's giving and supportive and loving and all of those things that you feel from just watching her episodes for 20 minutes every time she puts one out. And she actually sat by me side by side in the studio here and teached me teach me taught teach me <laughs> she didn't teach me good english but she did teach me taught me how to actually do some fun swipes and we swiped together which was a real highlight of the weekend for me um i'm gonna swipe today in honor of kathleen on this 16 by 20 inch canvas the show pony has pinned it and backed it I've prepared here some paper towels of varying sizes, which I've dampened because I'm going to be doing some wet swipes. And let me show you my 
cacophony of metallic colours that I'm going to be using. Oh, nice word. Thank you. So I've got three deco arts here that I'm going to use in various volumes on this canvas. I've got the Jadette, which is this one, lovely bright green. I've got Obsidian, which is this like very black grey, almost like dark graphite. And then I've got Peacock Pearl, which is this one here. Ooh. Thank you. And then I've got two Treasure Golds. I've got the Treasure Gold Platinum and Treasure Gold Aquamarine. So these are my lovely Treasure Golds. I've got some iridescent white to potentially swipe with as well. And then the Liquitex Basics Black, which is gonna be my base coat color. So two Liquitex Basics colors. And my plan is to probably swipe with the white, the obsidian and the silver using the three greens as colors across the canvas. So it's going to be a bit of a kind of play around and see what happens kind of swipe. Nice. Thank you. You picked some beautiful colors. Thank you, thank you. I really like these. They're really fun colors. And I, I don't often do a very green palette. So wanted to do something a little different. I normally do blue and gold. So here we go, folks. Um, I'm going to slap down my base coat, which is the black. Oh, quickly, just to let you know that this base coat, just like most of the actual colors, is a very thin consistency. It's very watery. If you can at all see this, you probably can't because it's black. But this is 50% Floetrol, 25% paint and 25% water. You need a thin consistency, I believe, for a swipe because otherwise your colours don't flow over the top of each other. And then all of the colours in these little plastic cups are mixed to the same consistency. Apart from maybe the Deco Art, they might have needed a little less water because Deco Art metallics are just a little thin as they are. Everything else was 50%. Floetrol, 25% paint, 25% water. All right, so I'm gonna get this base coat on the canvas and then I shall see you in a moment to layer these delicious colors. ladles and jelly spoons look at that beautiful base coat so shiny in fact you can see the blooming camera right there um, so just ignore that for the time being next I'm going to get these wonderful colors on this canvas so I've decided what I'm going to do is layer my greens and then behind it I'm going to layer the silver the white and the black and swipe through all three of them and just see what happens so I'm going to do half of this canvas at a time let's get this color on here first and then I'm going to do the peacock so that was the treasure gold I believe no the peacock is the uh, deco art yeah that the one I put down first was the treasure gold oh yes the one you put down aquamarine first. Yeah. and this is the jadeite or jadeite the sounds, Jedi. sounds like something from Star Wars exactly <laughs> mind tricks okay now this is the Treasure gold silver. Stunning silver. Let's get a little bit of the white on here. Not too much. Little trickle. And then I'm going to put some of the obsidian behind it. Hopefully it's going to be very similar to my black. Yes, it is. I love it. All right. So there's my colors that I'm going to be a swipe in. So um, swiping normally takes a little while and I'm going to edit a lot of the time out in between swipes so you don't have to sit here and watch it. So why don't you sit back peeps, enjoy some funky little music and I'll see you when I'm done.
gents. There we are. There was, I'm done. I am done. I was noodling, as Kathleen would say, for the longest time, thinking about this thick black line that I created. And I was contemplating swiping left and right across the center. Um, but I actually do really like that thick dividing line. Um, there's definitely a reflective kind of quality to this up and down. Um, I liked playing with the greens and the colors. I'm sure you could see me swiping with the silver and then going back over it because the silver just was not swiping as well as some of the other colors. Mm. Um, there's still a little bit of paint on this canvas. So I'm a little worried that there might be a little kind of wibbly lines as it dries. But um, for the most part, I think I've swiped off most of the top coat. But I really like the fact that this is just really green. Um, and I like the silver and the black. So I'm not gonna play this with this one anymore. Added a few lines of embellishments on this one. I am done. I've torched this. Let me take you guys in for a close up. All right, everybody, it's Jeremy here, and I am excited about this pour today. I love my colors. I got my canvas down here. This is a 20 by 20 inch canvas. It's been taped and pinned on the back. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> As always. <laughs> so uh, my colors today that I've chose are this permanent red violet light by Amsterdam. Sorry, I'm just playing with my microphone. I got manganese blue by Goldens. Lovely. Which is I love that blue. It's like electric blue. I have Prussian blue by Masters Touch thick body acrylics. Love it. I also have Prism Violet by uh, Master's Touch Thick Body Acrylics. Thank you. And then I have Iridescent White by Liquitex Basics. Wonderful. And then your base? Wonderful. My base is a concoction that I mixed myself. Um, it is like leftover paints that we had and it is just this lovely, it's like this purpley, kind of just gorgeous gorgeousness um but anyway it was just it was a, a bunch of different paints it was like i think it was uh the what is the purple that dioxazine purple okay some white yeah um i think it uh, had a little bit of gold in there and then it also had the that copper, that treasure gold, oh, antique, yeah, yeah. antique copper. copper. That's very plummy. Yeah, very okay. plummy kind of color. So that's what this was. Okay. But yeah. what, we've, what we found and what we've learned with leftover colors that are mixed together is that it doesn't always play nice in the pour. Yeah. So you're just going to use this as a flow extender. Exactly. So is it layering cup time? It is layering cup time. Okay, I am ready whenever you are, sir. All right. Let's see here. Just a little bit of that pearl white there. Some of this lovely Prussian blue. Some of this permanent red violet. So bright. Light. It's like bubblegum pink almost. Oh, it's so nice, I love it. Then we're gonna go with the I think a little bit of gold. And I think I'm gonna do some purple, some of this prism violet. A little bit more white.
some of this manganese blue. Such a bright blue as well. Isn't that just gorgeous? I think maybe a little bit of gold. Then we're gonna go back to the Prussian. Permanent red violet light. More. What? More. More? No, I'm gonna raise up to you. No. Okay. It takes over. It does? It does take over. And I think I did white between the. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch it up. Yeah, you're not feeling right. the cut. Should I keep going? Well, you need 12 ounces of paint for that canvas, and that's only like a 16, okay. I think, or 18 ounce cut. Okay. So you absolutely can. I would keep going. More is more. You can do a cool couple more layers. Perfect. All right, guys, I got my layered cup here. It is so awesome. And uh, I'm going to do a wandering straight pour here. Oh, just like we did on the big canvas? Yes. Okay. Yes, why, you're looking at me. Huh. Ah, interesting. I thought you were gonna do a wandering ring pour. No. Okay, okay. Why, you think I should change it up? It's up to you. The last pour you did was a wandering straight pour. Yeah. Have you done a wandering ring pour? I have not done a wandering oh, ring Oh, well, pour. then you're absolutely going to do a wandering ring pour. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, indeed. Okay. Lordy, Lord. Let's, right. let's mix it up. Oh, Lord. Okay, here we go. Nice and fast. Wowzers. Very interesting. I'm super excited about this one now. Yeah? Yeah. Really interesting colors. I'm, I'm keen to see how you stretch this one out. I, I know. Well done for, for being so flexible on the fly. Yeah, right? So now is it flow extender time? It is flow extender time. It's time to meet flow. So you guys, the reason why um, I'm going to be explaining this right now is because I got a question on the comments about what it, why use a flow extender. Okay. So a flow extender is, as you can see, I'm gonna be putting it around the composition here. Now a flow extender 
If you don't put on a flow extender, what happens is, is that, I'm gonna save some of this flow extender too, a little bit. Um, what happens if you don't put a flow extender on around your composition and you try to tilt it, it'll roll over itself and well, you'll well. lose the composition. The, this paint right here, okay. that's in the center, this will roll over itself and all these beautiful lines that you have will just disappear. Okay. So using a flow extender, once I, uh, I spread it out on the canvas, what happens is, is that it rolls over that paint and it spreads over that paint. So that way it, it flows over the paint. That's what a flow extender means. Yeah, you're extending the flow of your uh, composition. Exactly. Got it. And would you use a really expensive paint as a flow extender? No, I would not. Why? Because you're most likely gonna tilt it off or it'll be covered. Okay. So using a really expensive paint that's gonna be tilted off or covered, mm -hmm. I mean, why? It's counterproductive, I it's guess. It's counterproductive, it's wasting money. So that's one of the reasons why in the studio we'll use either leftover paints or we use like the Blick soft body acrylics, uh, sorry, exactly. the Artist Loft soft body acrylics, or we'll use Blick paints, ones that you can spend $10 on, get a quart of, so when right. you've mixed it with Floetrol and water, you know, it's very inexpensive for the volume of paint that you have. Exactly. Um, what about color choices of your flow extender? Do you like, can you pick any color you want? Well, um, normally we go, we, we use white or black, um, but you can use any color that you want to as a flow extender, depending on how you use your composition. What, what paints are you using in your composition? Okay, I would say the only addition to that is pay mind to the fact that as you tilt this out, you might want to leave negative space. Oh, so yes. if you use if you use a color that has no, um, you know, like um, that is not a, a good color for the composition of the piece that you're going to tilt, then you have to tilt it off. You've got no choice. But if you use a complementary color then you can then choose to leave negative space or not as your heart desires. Exactly. So a neutral color like black or white is a good one to use, but you know, if you'd put bright orange on here, show pony, you would clearly, well, you actually might not want to tilt it off because you love <laughs> orange, but most people would want to tilt it off because yes. it just wouldn't go with the composition. It wouldn't work. Yeah. So just maybe to think about it and think, well, if I do want to leave some negative space, will this base color, will this flow extender color work? Yeah. And what about thicknesses of your flow extender? <laughs> now your flow extender, you want it to be a little bit more thin than your paint. Okay. Like a lot thin or not? Not a lot thin, just a little bit more thin. Okay. Why not a lot thin? Because it'll, leave, it'll cause cells. Yeah, it's, what'll happen is, is you pour your composition over the top of that super, super thin base coat. The super thin base coat will show through in your composition and you'll get just like ba the base coat color cells where yeah. it's overstretched. Yes. All right, guys, you know what time it is. What time is it? It is tilting time. Let's tilt this wandering ring pour out. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen here.
right, guys, this piece is done. And stick a fork wow. in me, I'm done. Yes, I am really impressed with this piece. Um, I love what happened all right here. I love this manganese blue, like white, and uh, you know, I really thought that that permanent red violet light was gonna take over, and it didn't. But there's lots of highlights of it. Yeah, which I love. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, it just this, there's so much movement in this piece, it's not even funny. Um, so yeah, I'm in love with it. I hope you guys love it. I can't wait to hear your comments on it or read your comments on it. And let's take you in for a close up. Let's do it. So there you have it, guys. There you have it. <laughs> oh, it's catching me up saying I that. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. <laughs> so, what did you guys think? I know that Lee, what did you think about your swipe? You know, there was a part where I was like, oh, what's going on? This isn't gonna work. So as I layered my colors and, and first swiped with the silver and the obsidian, the obsidian just took over everything. Mm. So that was going to be left out. Then when I layered with the silver, it was swiping and I was getting cells, but it wasn't allowing the other colors behind it to swipe with them. Uh. I don't know whether my silver was maybe too thick or I don't know, it just didn't work. So when I abandoned the silver and just went with the greens and the pearls, loved it. I got a really fun composition. Oh I fell in love with yours. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. The only thing that I noodled on for the longest time was the big thick black line in the middle. Now, I oh. really love a negative space line so that it kind of looks like a reflection, reflection, but I was really unsure whether I wanted to swipe again down the middle of it and I think I talked myself out of it. So, I'm sure Kathleen is watching and she'll probably send me a text and say, you need it to have swiped it, honey. And that may well be the case. But um, yeah, in the moment, I just chickened out, I think. No. I, I, think I just loved the composition that I had. Yeah, I think and it I chickened was beautiful. Out. So. Thank you. What about your wandering <laughs> ring pull? You threw me for a, a loop on that one, literally. A literally, loop. Ah. yeah. Um, and, uh, but I loved it. I thought it came out great. There were so many interesting parts to it. Right. It was so, such a lot of movement and awesome. I loved that permanent red violet light right. through there. Like it had these highlights of it and uh, that manganese blue is stunning. Right. So I, I just, I loved it. I loved it too. I'm glad that you rose to the challenge. I mean, you could have said no, you know, <laughs> but you went with it. Um, Me say no. Mm, okay. <laughs> As if. Um, yeah, um, but no, you didn't, and it looked amazing. I really, really loved it. It was yeah. a very, what did with the word we used? It was so um, fitting, freaky composition. Yeah. It was. It was like bizarre looking almost, um, but I really loved it. I did too. We I, like, yeah. We do like the weird and strange. I do. I like chaotic. Yeah. So it came out really, yeah. really awesome. We would also love to hear your comments and oh, let us know absolutely. what you think too. Yeah. I liked it. All right. Do you want more comments? What is it? Do you want more comments? No. Okay. no. Yes. It yes. Was fabulous. Please give me it some more It was wonderful. <laughs> You're a model. You're like Linda Evangelista. <laughs> So, all right, guys. So, this is the ending of the video. So, Maybe you'll be glad to know. <laughs> so, thank you all for being here. It was awesome having you all come to the premiere. Right. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, like we said yes. earlier. And I'm yeah. off. To, I'm off to spank the Patreons. Oh, off to spank the Patreons. Exactly. Let's get them some spankings. <laughs> right. We'll see you there. Bye, guys. Bye. So, we want to take a moment to spank. Spank. <laughs> Spank some very special. <laughs> <laughs> Larry.
we want to take a moment to thank some very special people. Absolutely. And that's our Patreons. Patreons. So the Patreon account is a very separate account from YouTube, mm -hmm. but it allows some very important people the opportunity to get a little bit of a closer look of the studio. And there are certain levels. So at one level, for example, you get to see sneak peeks and behind the scenes videos. Mm -hmm. At another level, you're invited to join us in a WhatsApp group where we chat, we exchange pictures, and you also get weekly painting challenges. In another level, you get um, once a month live streams. At another level, you get once a month tutorials that are live. Yes. And then at our top tier, the diamond level, you would get to pick the colors and the technique for an episode of Massey Art Studios. Mm -hmm. And then you get to keep one of the 11 by 14 inch canvases every single month. And so, with a change of venue... What? I know. <laughs> we've got some very special people that we have to thank. Yes. And that is our gold Massey Posse. That's Trisha West, Jane Klein, Stephanie Hancock, Donna Patterson, Terry Leshner, Gloria Salaki, it's Nate Bright, it's Linda Serien, Crafty Chicken Mom, it's Rebecca Hawes Winters, Patsy Petrilli, it's Tammy Houdsbrook, it's Kelly Stowell, and it's Gillian Barnett. Now with the Platinum level, it's Leslie Beaver, Janice and Steve Pittman, Donna Panis, Dana Foxley, Elaine Burton, Susan Shepperson, and Robin Koza. And you all know her, we all love her. At the diamond <laughs> level, there's only one person, yes. and that is Sparkles. Sparkles. So to you guys and to everyone else that, whose names that you'll see here listed below, Thank you so very much. We yes. absolutely love that you're here with us on this journey and we're gonna keep pouring. Yes. Thank you guys. Bye guys. <laughs>